Hello, 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 and welcome to another video. To, this video is actually part of our monetization series where we're talking about how podcasters can make money. And today we have a very special guest with us. We have our very own Rebecca, who is uh, who works with me in Spreaker. And in this episode, uh, we're going to be talking all about programmatic advertising. So hello, Rebecca. Hello, how are you? I'm fantastic. I'm super excited about this episode. This episode is just going to be one of many where me and Rebecca and other individuals are going to come together and we're talking all about monetization, making money with podcasting. So stay tuned for this video, watch this video and all the other videos that are going to come out. But before we get into the nitty gritty, all of the juicy stuff, maybe Rebecca, you can talk to talk about yourself a little bit and introduce your yourself and your role here at Spreaker. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me, Yvonne. Um, yeah, so I work as the marketing and monetization manager at Spreaker for my heart. And so really uh, in the most simple form, my job is to work with the podcasters who really want to make the most amount of money possible from their content. Um, and so my team, the prime team, uh, look after those podcasters and support them in optimizing their optimizing their content um, and making sure that they are earning as much money, but while also managing their podcasts in the best way possible. So that's a very simplified version of what I do. Fantastic. I loved it. Short and sweet. So let's get to the point. Let's get to what this video is all about, which is pro programmatic advertising. So this is just one of the many ways that program like podcasters can make money. However, I would argue, and you can agree or disagree with me, but I would argue that this is like one of the quickest and the easiest ways that podcasters can start making money with their podcasts today. Like right now, while they're watching this video, they can, you know, turn on programmatic. Um, but let's talk about a little bit what is programmatic and if you can define it for us for anyone out there that's watching that might not understand what it is. Yeah, you're, and you're dead right saying, you know, that it's the most quickest uh, and probably effortless, I would say, as well, way for a podcaster to start making money, depending on your hosting platform, of course, because there are barriers um, to be able to use programmatic marketplaces on certain platforms. Spreaker is not one of them, spoiler. <laughs> but um, we'll talk about that in a few minutes, I guess. Um, but basically, you asked me what programmatic advertising is. And really, programmatic advertising refers to the market place where the buying and selling of um, programmatic ads happens automatically. So um, it's, it's real time bidding, um, if you like, in another way to explain it. So podcasters basically will place ad cue points within their episodes. Um, and so that's where, you know, basically an ad is called for. And then the programmatic marketplace has ads in there uh, from advertisers, and it will be placed into this ad cue point of the podcasters episode in real time. And so in real time, what happens is that the ad with the highest CPM, the, the, the best value ad for the podcaster at that time gets inserted into the podcast episode. And then once it's impressed by the listener and the listener hears the, the ad, then that's um, counted and the, the ad advertiser pays and the podcaster gets paid. Okay. Yeah. Well, short and sweet to the point. Great. Okay. So you talked about and you mentioned that Spreaker um, has its own, like Spreaker, at Spreaker, we do programmatic advertising. So if someone is a Spreaker host and they are watching this video and they have not turned on programmatic advertising and they want to take advantage of that, how does that exactly work and how can they do that? Yeah, it's, it, it couldn't be more simple, to be honest with you. Um, with, within the Spreaker dashboard, we have a monetization tab and you click on the monetization tab and you basically accept the terms and conditions of, of, of enabling programmatic monetization and uh, you turn it on with a switch and it is literally a switch. Um, it goes from, from green to yellow or from yellow to green, I can't remember, <laughs> but it, it literally is a switch. Um, and so... I mean, I guess the kind of unique position of Spreaker is that 
there is no barrier to entry. Like I said before, there's no minimum requirement of downloads you need to have in order to access the programmatic marketplace. So um, in lots of other places, you you know, you need to have a minimum of, say, 10,000 downloads or 5,000 downloads in order to be able to start getting programmatic ads. Um, with us, you just need to have a subscription on Spreaker. And those subscriptions, I mean, I, I believe our lowest plan starts at $8 a month. So, you know, from that, price point you can you can have access to a to actually the the industry's largest programmatic marketplace and we also have some fancy nice tools to help people to i want to talk about that a little bit as well yeah sure i mean um i guess one of the pain points or one of the things that people dislike about programmatic is that they often say it can be a little bit you know disruptive within the content and so our team have designed a auto uh, silence detection software where basically you can ask the so you can automatically place the cue points by clicking a button and it will find a natural silence within your episode. Um, so therefore, it's less jarring, if you like. You also have the option to go through and manually insert the cue points, which I would always recommend. But say, for example, if you wanted to get like started right away, like tomorrow, um, I would recommend you start off with the auto insertion. So you click the button, turn it on. It will identify any silent points within your content. So you start making money from that moment on. And then what you can do in your own time, because I know podcasters are super busy, is you can go back and you can prioritize which episodes you want to manually have a little listen to and insert cue points, you know, maybe move them around, add more, whatever you feel like is appropriate. But that tool is really an amazing thing for programmatic. Yeah, I have to say that, you know, as someone who also has a podcast and if you have like a very large back catalog and you're coming onto Spreaker or, you know, sometimes you don't have the time to understand where you can insert ads. And I think this helps a lot. And I think that's amazing. Um, but I think one of the things that I really want to point out and we, we want to talk about also is that, yes, programmatic is very easy. It's very quick. You can turn it on, um, on in Spreaker. Super easy to do. But just because you turn it on doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to start making thousands and thousands of dollars right away unless you have a lot, a lot of downloads coming in, right? Um, so it really, and also on top of that, it really depends on where the downloads come from, which is something that I think people, you know, like should know about. And it's something that's called ad fill. And I was wondering if you could explain what exactly that means and how does that affect how much you can make with programmatic advertising? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's like any market. There's, you know, different prices for different things or a different amount of supply and demand in different markets. And ad fill really refers to the amount of those ad cue points that the that a podcaster places within their episode. Ad fill refers to the amount or the percentage of those points that can actually be filled with an ad. And so different markets, um, depending on, on, on what they are, have a higher ad fill, um, you know, where there's a lot of podcast advertisement available. And um, there's loads of agencies and advertisers wanting to advertise in podcasts. And then there's other markets where ad fill will be slightly lower, um, where, you know, maybe I don't know, education around how successful podcast advertising is, the conversion rate, that kind of thing. They're, they're not as interested in podcast advertising yet. So for just as an example, or if you want to know like which market is the best or the most successful at the moment, definitely the US market is the strongest for programmatic advertising. Um, so if you have a certain amount of, you know, downloads in the US, you're probably going to earn more money than if you have that amount in another market that isn't as high in ad fill. But that doesn't necessarily mean mean that if you have listeners in other countries, you won't have ad fill, right? There's also other countries. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest, it's very rare to have a podcaster who has a podcast with their entire 100% audience only from one geolocation. So usually you'll have a mix. And while, yep, yeah, you definitely, you know, monetizing in the US is, is most strong, if you like, at the moment. If you have downloads that are coming from the UK, coming from Ireland, coming from India, you'll, you will still be able to monetize them depending on the amount of ads that are available in that market at the time. So it just depends. Amazing. That's really great. And that's good to know for anyone that's listening. It's, this is a really key uh, piece of, that you need to understand if you want to uh, start using programmatic advertising. Now, 
Yes. There is one other thing, Yvonne. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt That's you. That's okay. Let's mind. go. It's actually quite a useful piece of information for podcasters who are looking to grow their audience because okay. you could strategically grow your audience in a specific market, knowing that that kind of an audience, you know, will be more monetizable for you. So, you know, if you were going to run a campaign, for example, um, or I don't know, a, a campaign to try and get more listeners to your podcast, you should run it in the US rather than running it in a country where the ad feels lower if your ultimate goal is to, you know, start to make money from your content. Sorry for interrupting. No, that was that's such a great that's such a great piece of uh, advice because that is true. Like if you're strategic with your podcast and you need to be strategic, if your goal is to make money, then understanding that if you have more downloads or more listens from the US, you can be making more money and then strategically understanding how you can do that and running ads or joining Facebook groups in the U S whatever, whatever it is that you need to do marketing wise to be able to reach those, U uh, S ears, let's say. Absolutely. Um, yeah. That's amazing. That's a great tip. Now I know that there's some programmatic myths that are out there and I really do want to like talk about those. However, I really want to look at some examples because you know, people like to see some examples, some realistic examples. And so let's took, let's look at some prime host examples and how much they've made um, in the last month. I don't know if you can provide some numbers for us. Yeah, of course. And I, of course, I can provide, provide examples. I love examples as, ne- as as much as the next person, of course. Um, but what I will say, like full disclosure with examples is that, you know, you, comparing yourself, your podcast to another person's podcast, you just can't do it. It's not a case. It's it's comparing apples and oranges. It's it's not um, a true comparison. Um, so, you know, when you hear so one person is making X amount of money with their podcast, you have to understand that there are so many variables, different um, criteria and different things that can affect how much money you can make with your podcast. You know, you have to think about what type of content it is that you have. Is it evergreen? Do you have a big back catalog? Um, you know, what is the ad category? you know what is the ad fill in the market at the time um you know the number of ad spots that you're actually inputting into your content that you're comfortable with having that will affect your revenue and uh, the length of your episodes the impression rate <laughs> yeah. there's so many things um that you need to that that you know that affect how much money you can make with your podcast so having yeah. Put that kind of warning out there. Um, I'll give you some examples. I mean, what I did was I looked at a couple of our different cat- uh, podcasters from different categories. So, for example, I'll start with the kind of the upper echelon of things. So, you know, we we have a couple of true crime podcasts on Spreaker from my heart that are extremely successful, like one of which, say, if they're getting about a million um, monthly downloads, just as an example, mm-hmm. that person would be earning about $20,000 a month just from programmatic. Um, and so that's just from programmatic. They will be using other forms of monetization that we'll definitely talk about another time at, like the, at the same time like sponsorship at the same time um another example would be a podcast with you know a sports podcast 120,000 downloads a month um earning over three and a half thousand dollars a month um another example would be society and culture podcast with about 14,000 downloads a month um and earning 200 dollars a month so you can really see Never there's range. big differences there and there's ranges and you know it just depends on all those factors um, Um, that I mentioned previously. But we also want to mention that like these individuals are doing programmatic plus something like programmatic is not usually a standalone way of making money. It's always an addition to something else. So this is something that is, yes, you can start making money with with programmatic right now. um, And it's something that you can do easy and you can start generating income while you work on sponsorship deals or you work on these different kinds of other options to make money with your podcast. And so that's really important to note as well. And this is something that we will definitely be talking about in a future episode. Uh, sponsorships is is something that we do and we plan on covering absolutely for sure I mean I would think of programmatic as a a very quick effortless and consistent form of monetization for podcasts of all sizes and that's kind of how I would define it there you go I mean in the last question I said something I said a word it was called prime our prime hosts and if you're watching this and you're like what what is prime what is that um, we'll have a, a video about that as well, explaining all of that, but maybe we can do a little bit of a teaser of anyone who's interested in understanding what Prime uh, is here at Spreaker. 
Absolutely. So Prime is really like my baby kind of within Spreaker. Mm -hmm. I mentioned it in the intro. My team look after after Prime, our Prime hosts. And really what a Prime host is, is an exclusive plan on, on Spreaker where we um, take in podcasters that are, are that are getting over 5,000 US monthly downloads. Um, and they, they are podcasters who really want to make money from their podcast and grow their podcast. And so uh, we offer them in exchange for um, coming onto our platform, we offer them free hosting on our publisher plan, which is the, the highest, most advanced plan that they can have on Spreaker. Um, and we offer them access to our programmatic marketplace um, and marketing support. We offer them um, a very dedicated team of customer support, which is so important in podcasting to actually have a a human being to go to and ask questions about you know how to optimize your content um how to monetize your content properly and also just questions in general about you know what does this mean what does that mean how can i do this better what the, our prime program on Spreaker offers all of that in, in one plan so if you do have over five thousand downloads a month in the us um please get in contact with us we're get, there's a link in the bio below. So if you're interested in learning more about that, please click that link and uh, you'll get more information and, or leave a comment and we'll definitely respond to you. Absolutely. Now, let, let's get into like the last little piece of this video and we're going to talk about programmatic myths. Um, programmatic. A lot of people have some myths. Um, programmatic does sometimes get a bad rap in the industry. Some people say some some not so nice things about it. So why don't we address those? If you can, I think there's two or three that we're going to address. Um, and can you tell me what those myths are and why they are a myth and why people should not be listening to that? To that. <laughs> yeah, this is actually one of my favorite things to talk about because um, I just think it's really interesting. So yeah, I mean, programmatic does have a have a. I don't even. I don't want to use the word reputation, but it's you know, some people do say, like I mentioned before, about it being a little bit jarring or interruptive um, within content. And like I said, there are so many different innovations happening with Orion programmatic that this is becoming less and less of a of a truth. Um, for example what I mentioned earlier, and I won't bore you again with talking about it, but the, the auto silence detection tool that we have within our programmatic um, monetization dashboard, you know, that is a, a huge development that we've done in order to kind of stop this from, from happening um, or to help, you know, improve the experience, let's say, of the listener. So, yeah, I mean, as long as programmatic is, 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 is done correctly, like, the, you know, diligently put in the ad cue points, there's not too many ads, um, and that kind of thing, then it's 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 not jarring or uncomfortable for users. They're used to hearing hearing ads. Yeah, we're we're all used to listening to ads nowadays. And if we really support someone, like a if, we, if someone if a listener is supporting the podcast host and really believe in them, they I think they're more willing to listen to some ads here and there, um, knowing that that money can get, then be reinvested into the podcast, into equipment, to making the whole podcasting experience for the listener better in, in the end. So, yeah, I think we're we're all used to ads. I think that's not really like a big problem anymore. <laughs> no, definitely not. I mean, we've never had somebody on let me just reference our prime program we've never had a, a podcaster on that lose audience for example for using ads and the, they are they are podcasters who use ads in every episode almost you know it's it's not it's a non-issue there you go yeah. so that's myth number one so that's debunked so <laughs> let's go into myth number two yeah, I mean, I, I guess probably the second thing that people think of when they think of programmatic is really low bottom of the barrel CPMs. And I mean, I explained before about the, you know, the automatic um, placement of ads. It's 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 like an online bidding system, basically, where the highest CPM is always available. And programmatic has got, you know, seasonality effects programmatically massively because, you know, during periods of time in the year when, you know, it's a holiday period, for example, Thanksgiving or around December time, CPMs are extremely high um, in programmatic because of all of the money that's being spent by advertisers. So, you know, it follows the same trends, if you like, as other types of advertising where parts of the year are going to be quieter, other parts of the year are going to be, you know, higher in terms of, of the amount of revenue that can be can be made. So, you know, it's I think that's a very false and very generic 
statement to make of like, oh, they're low bottom of the barrel CPMs. It's not the case. Honestly, within Spreaker, we see CPMs going up to $30 CPMs, you know, for certain programmatic buys. And that's just the way it is. You know, it, it fluctuates yeah. and it depends. I mean, also, if if whoever's watching doesn't know, maybe Rebecca, you can say what a CPM is. I don't know if everyone that's watching knows what it is. Yeah, sure. So CPM just stands for the cost per thousand impressions. So um, basically, it's it's a metric that's used within podcasting to kind of gauge the value, if you like, of of an ad. Um, and I'll be honest, and I hope we can talk about this in like a, another episode, but mm-hmm. I think it's becoming a, a metric that it, it used to be the be all and end all of metrics within the podcasting industry. And I think it's becoming a metric that people are you know, using alongside other types of metrics like revenue per thousand impressions, you know, and honestly, if we went into that now today, we (laughs) we talk for the next 30 minutes. So I think we should do a dedicated episode on that for sure. I'm up for that. Uh, If you guys are up for that, please let us know in the comments below. Uh, We would love to do another video. (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I also want to talk about this concept and idea of like, people don't want to add ads or uh, have ads in their podcast because they don't want specific ads being run in in their in their podcast, mm-hmm. right? But there's a way to block that, right? Yeah. So I mean, it's actually another topic with, with regards to to programmatic is is brand safety and you know making sure that something that you stand for um, as a podcaster um, and your what your content represents, you know, you're not having ads placed in that that are totally against your values as a as a creator. So yeah, I mean, IAB categories are are basically the categories that different types of ads are categorized under. Sorry for all of the categorized <laughs> word use. Um, and so there are ways for us to be able to block specific IAB categories and subcategories um, on the back end of, of the platform so that you, you know, those ads are are blocked. Now, programmatic advertising, that's never a hundred percent a fail safe because mm-hmm. sometimes ads do come through uncategorized or miscategorized. Um, and in those cases, they can slip through. But what happens is we are, we have a team dedicated to that in-house who we are diligently monitoring that and we, sh- we shut it down as quickly as we possibly can. But in general, it's a, it's the safest way to reduce the, the brand safety risk, if you like. Perfect. So I think those were three myths, right? So the first one was um, that it has a reputation of being unnatural or jarring, which is false, not necessarily. The reputation of having low CPMs, also false. And this idea that um, if you do put in ads, I guess, like you risk your, you can be risking your brand, your brands, like this brand safety, the other concept of brand safety, which is yeah. like, we can help you also mitigate all these risks. I mean, it's never a hundred percent, nothing is ever a hundred percent, but we can help uh, mitigate all these risks and, you know, help you feel comfortable with what kind of ads that you're running uh, on your catalog. So I think, I think that's a lot of information (laughs) at this point in time. Um, But I also wanted to like a little add that, you know, sponsorship, let's talk about like programmatic is best done. And if you can do this in like, you know, very as short as sweet as possible. It's best yeah. done with sponsorships, which is another video that we're going to do. And maybe we can talk very quickly about why that is. Yeah, I mean, in the simplest terms, like there, there are two different types of advertising that that are that work beautifully together to basically maximize the revenue of, of any podcaster. Um, programmatic, I've explained what that is already. There's no barrier to entry on Spreaker for that. With, with, with the sponsorship situation, they're direct deals that are done with um, agencies and advertisers who want to advertise specifically on your podcast. So a sponsorship mostly is you know best known as a live host read, for example. Um, and so there there's has to be um, that has to be set up and organized and agreed upon. It there's a record, the ad has to be recorded by the podcaster, and then the technology needs to be there to insert the ad dynamically into the content. And so the ad spots that mm-hmm. that the dynamic live reads are inserted into are the same ad spots as we use for programmatic advertising. So they can both run at the same time, if that makes sense, in, in, yeah. in total harmony. Um, the live reads 
for example, will always be placed or given priority over programmatic if the if the CPMs are higher. Um, and then it just works like a waterfall effect where, you know, you basically have your highest CPMs coming from your live reads and we fill the, the rest of your content, the rest of your inventory, the rest your remnant basically with programmatic ads. So I would highly recommend that they're used together where possible. But if you aren't as, if you're not big enough to mm -hmm. have sponsorship which usually um you, you usually need around 40,000 downloads a month as a as a minimum consistently um with consistent podcasting to qualify for for sponsorship so if you're not there yet then mm -hmm. you use programmatic to start off with and you grow your podcast and then you'll evolve into being able to use uh live reads and, and sponsorship and so at least you're making money, some money. Absolutely. Not, not a lot of money, but you're still making some, which is always every good. Every little counts. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, thank you so much, Rebecca, for this. I hope everyone watching this learned a little bit more about programmatic advertising. There's links in the bio if you want any more information. Um, and if you have any questions about program programmatic advertising, please let us know in the comments below. And we would love to answer that question. Stay tuned for all the other videos we're going to be talking about with Rebecca, a monetization. And until next time, thank you, Rebecca. Thank you so much, Yvonne.